It's no secret that real estate is one of the best investment vehicles out there. But with all the current uncertainty, how do we know when and where to put our hard-earned money to work for us? It's easy to become distracted by that shiny object or the quote-unquote next best thing. So how do we determine which strategies will best align with our financial goals? Whether you're an active real estate entrepreneur, a passive investor, or looking to get into real estate investing, our goal is to provide investors with the insights and strategies to build our portfolios all while protecting our capital. I'm Danny Nichols. And I'm Chris Thompson. This is the Two Smart Assets Real Estate Investing Podcast. Listen, if you're interested in passive real estate investing, but aren't sure how or where to get started, our passive investing guide walks you through the entire process from understanding the benefits to performing the due diligence. Download your copy today at twosmartassets.com and start taking action. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Two Smart Assets Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Nichols, and today our guest is Dustin Heiner. Dustin is the founder of Master Passive Income and Successfully Unemployed. He's a real estate rental property investor who was able to make enough passive income from his business to quit his job when he was 37 years old. With his podcast, books, courses, and coaching, he now helps other people quit their job by investing in real estate rental properties to live the dream life. Love that. Dustin, it's great to see you, man. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on the show, Danny. I'm super excited to just share how amazing real estate's been in my life so that other people can see that it's it's really not that hard. But at the same time, once you do, oh my goodness, your life just literally changes for the better. I literally don't work at all. So that's I get to have good conversations with guys like you. Uh, man, yeah, I'm, I'm honored to have you on the show. Can't wait to dive into this. First and foremost, I'm going to say that if any of the listeners right now are not following Dustin on uh, YouTube or social media, get out there right now, go do it. He's dropping some major value out there. Um, go out there, start following right now, do it right now. Well, after you listen to the show, but after that. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, so, you know, uh, Dustin, uh, like I said, excited to have you on the show today. I kind of want to just kick this thing off by hearing more about your story. So tell us more about your background and, you know, how you landed on real estate investing of all things, right? Yeah. So I've always been in my life, just I'm more of a doer and I've also been entrepreneurial. So my dad was definitely entrepreneurial. He had his own business. My mom and he split up. And so my, my mom remarried and my stepdad was also entrepreneurial. So I had, you know, a lot of examples of being entrepreneurial. And so I always realized that I could start a business, but at the same time, we're, I go to school and school tells you, you just keep working and then you get a corporate job and you work there till you're 65 and then you retire. I didn't know any better. But I also thought about business. Anyways, long story short, I had started in a couple of different businesses. Number one, when I was like 13 years old, I had a newspaper delivery route. You know, you take the, you're on your bike, you take a paper, you bang it on the garage door and stuff, and you keep writing. Oh, yeah. So that was fun. I did that. But then as I got older, I started other businesses like a graphic and website design company, a skateboard manufacturing business, mm -hmm. even a convenience store and a pizzeria and multiple other businesses. But they were all, active income. Like I literally had to work. And what I realized after reading a books and learning was that passive income is the route that I wanted to go. And while I'm creating all those businesses, I buy one piece of real estate. I buy a rental property. And as I buy that property, the first month that it's rented, I get a check for my property manager for like 386 or $7 or something like that, like 380 bucks. Like, wow, I didn't do anything. And I made money. So that got me started down the route of oh my goodness, like this could be what I want to do. And it's the easiest thing I've ever done, let alone all the other businesses that I've created, which are a lot of work. But I, Danny, I got to tell a quick story of how I actually made that shift in my brain to where I said, you know what? No longer am I going to be working that nine to five J-O-B. It's a, I call it a J-O-B. Your job is just over broke because your boss is not going to pay you too much out of his pocket. That's going to make it, you know, lose money. So here's what happened to me. So I was working at the county in California, Fresno County. I was doing IT work at a certain department. And I've been working there for 10, 15 years, like a long time building up seniority because that's what I was always told. And at the same time, I was starting a couple of businesses. They weren't doing that great. I bought one rental property. It was doing okay. But my wife had kid after kid and I'm still working a regular desk job. And it was a good job. Don't get me wrong. It was a good job. But when my wife had our fourth child, so our wife just had her fourth child and I go on paternity leave. Now, paternity leave is where the dad stays home with the mom and stays for maybe a week or two to bond with the baby, help with the diapers and all that good stuff. And so I go on paternity leave, but then I get back. And the week that I get back on a Friday at 3.30 in the afternoon, I get a call from my boss's, boss's, boss's secretary, like the top dog. And he, her boss's secretary says, Dustin, would you please come to the office? And I say, sure. 
and I hang up the phone and I pause for a second. And I realize, like, I start thinking to myself, why would they be calling me to the office? Like, this isn't normal. This is weird. Why would they be calling me? And then I paused even more and I thought, oh man, two months ago, I remembering, I was remembering that a couple months ago, there was some rumors or some rumblings that the department was running, either running out of money or running low on money, that there may be layoffs. And I immediately shook it off. I was like, no, I work for the government. Nobody gets fired or laid off from the government. And I've been here for plenty of years. I'll be totally fine. So I shook it off. But then I get up and I start walking down the hallway to my boss's office. Now, this hallway wasn't very long per se, but every single step, <laughs> it felt like the hallway got longer and longer and longer. And each step felt like my feet became heavier and heavier lead bricks. Like I could barely move them because it started weighing on me that this could potentially, like this is really out of, out of normal. And this is potentially a time where I might lose my job. All these years of working and working and working for a career may all get taken away. And so as I get through the hallway, I turn the corner and I see my boss's, uh, his door is closed and the secretary is sitting right there in her desk. And sheepishly, she looks at me and says, Dustin, would you please have a seat? And I go and I have a seat and she's consoling me with her eyes and kind of grinning, trying to give me a little cheer up. But at the same time, she knows everything that's going on. I know nothing about what's going on. So she's trying to console me with her eyes. And then as I sit there with my boss's door closed, I start thinking, oh my goodness, like this seems like this is what happens when people get laid off. And so I started going through my brain of if I get laid off, how am I going to feed my family? How am I going to put a roof over our heads? And what does that make me as a father? Does that make me a failure as a father? Does it make me a failure as a husband, as a man providing for his family? And all these years working for a career, is that all waste? And as I'm sitting there, my forehead gets all sweaty and my hands get all clammy because it feels like the weight of the world is literally coming on my shoulders. And then the door to my boss's office opens up and out walks a lady with a piece of paper in her hand. And it's my a coworker of mine and she is noticeably distraught, noticeably upset. She's not necessarily crying, but you can tell her world is 100% rocked. And as she passes by me, my boss says, Dustin, would you please come in the office? And so I get up nervously and I walk in the office and my boss says, we, the department is running out of money or we don't have enough money. We need to lay you off. And so I get laid off. And remember, again, this is the government. Nobody gets fired or laid off the government. So if I did, more than likely anybody else could too. And so I take that pink slip, basically a two weeks notice back to my desk. And then I sit down and I realize two things right there, Danny. The first thing I realized, I need to get a job. Like I need to provide for my family. I need to make sure we have food on the table, roof over our heads. And so I worked really, really hard. I was really super blessed to be able to find another department in the same county that took me over as a transfer. So I was blessed to literally not even have to lose the job. I went over and started working there, which was check number one. Like that was good, number one. The second thing, as I'm sitting there, I realize that I need to make sure that I never, ever, ever let this happen to me again. I need to make sure that nobody has the power over me to take away the ability for me to feed my family. So right then and there, I realize that my value is no longer ever going to be in my job because we always get asked a question. I know I get asked a question. Hey, Dustin, what do you do? Well, they're asking you basically, what is the value that you put on yourself? And when I realize that I would always say, I work for the county government. I do IT work. Well, that's the value that I was projecting out to everybody else. I said, no more. Sitting in my chair that day, I said, this. the second thing I'm realizing is no, no more will I ever tell anybody my values in my job. My value comes from my God, from myself, from my wife and my kids. And that point forward, I said, I am an investor. It may so happen that I have a full-time job that is making me up all my money, 100% of my money came from there. But now that is my part-time job. I am 100% an investor. Now I'll round up the story, Danny, to share with you that I worked, no, no, I remember five or six years at the new department, bought property after property, bought rental property that made me $250 or more, or more, like some are making me a lot more than that. And after 30 plus properties, I realized working at this new great department, my goodness, I don't need to work here anymore. I literally have enough money. So here, I'll finish out the story by, I went into my boss's office and I gave him a two weeks notice. I said, hey boss, here's my two weeks notice. I am not gonna work here anymore. He said, Dustin, what are you gonna do? And I said, nothing. I literally have real estate. I don't work. I don't work 
30 minutes a day. I don't work 30 minutes a week. I don't work 30 minutes, basically a month. I just grab my property management statements of all my properties and then set them aside. You know, I review it and set them aside. And so for everybody listening to this, I want you to realize that your value is so much more than anybody could ever pay you. And this is how I know that. Number one, they're not going to pay you more than that. They actually take money out of their pocket. So they're paying you just enough to keep you working without quitting, but not so much that takes money out of their pocket. And so if you realize that your value is so much greater than that, then the sky's the limit. So the last thing I'll say is I was making $75,000 a year working the county. It's good money. Don't get me wrong. But I realized I was losing money working there. And so if you remember that hallway, that last walk, the, you know, back a little bit, I walked that hallway to my boss's office to get laid off. The last walk I took was a mile and a half walk. I worked in downtown Fresno and I didn't want to pay for parking. So I, I walked, I was on approval. So I walked a mile and a half to my car. I've done this walk thousands of times. This last walk, I felt like I was walking on clouds because I realized I would never, ever, ever need another job because I already had all the money coming in from all my money, my, my, my rental properties passively, and nobody could ever take the ability for me to feed my family out of my ability ever again. Man, that's got to be a great feeling. Really, you know, and it's a 180 from where you were, you know, just a couple of years before that, right? And uh, I think that's uh, that's that's pretty amazing. And I want to touch on a few things that you, that you mentioned there is that that mindset, that projection of who you are as a, as a person, what value you bring, right? You know, and as uh, as most people say, you know, what they, you know, you ask somebody what they do, they're going to tell you what they do for the W2 job. That's just pretty common, right? I mean, that's, that's what I've done most of my life, right? And uh, I think that it's pretty important to have that, you know, to have that mindset shift really project with you who you want to be or who you who you are becoming right or, or or whatever right and i think that's so important i'm i'm really glad you brought that up cuz i think a lot of people miss that right a lot of people miss that and i think they can get a lot of value from that another thing i want to talk about is do you and this is just this is kind of an opinion and a question but you know looking back at it you know you lost your job you got laid off you already investing in real estate and then you started working again and then you built up this portfolio to allow you to quit your job. That moment when you you look back at it, losing your job for that first time, do you think that was how important was that moment into to getting to where you are today? Anytime that I hear of somebody else losing their job, just like I did, I immediately think, I am so excited for you. Let me give you an example why. So I have a good friend of mine. We met at the gym. We, we did CrossFit together and we worked out together and he lost his job and he called me up and he was pretty, pretty scared. He's been talking to fa family members and friends and they were all worried for him. But he called me up and said, Dustin, I, you know, I just, I just walked away from my job. I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, I am so excited for you because I knew nobody else would be talking about this. They literally would not have this perspective. When I got, when I lost my job, that means that made me put my effort into something else as opposed to building up somebody else's business. And so when I lost my job, that was like the catapult. I was like, yes, this is, I'm going to make this for good. It's like something bad happened. Well, good. Let's make it better by learning from it and growing. And so my buddy who has actually been three years now since he lost his job, he is doing fine. He's never need another job again because he's either got real estate or he's building his businesses. Because once you have that idea that it's possible to do it without working for somebody else, you literally have that mindset shift in your brain. And then all the possibilities are endless. You know, they say that necessity is a mother of invention. Well, that was for me. I had to do all this stuff because I was not going to let it happen again. So I'm glad that I got laid off because it sucked at the time, or sorry, but it's, you know, a little crude, but it was horrible at the time. But now looking back five years of literally not having, I quit my job in 2017, travel the world and with my family. But now I look back, I'm like, that was one of the best things that happened to me. I, you know, and I think that's amazing because, you know, a lot of people, they get laid off and it's, it's one of the worst days of their lives. Right. I mean, that's just, that's just typically how it's portrayed. And, you know, I think it's, it's pretty important to recognize those turning points in your life because who knows? I mean, you're very entrepreneurial. You started some businesses. So maybe if you, even if you weren't into real estate investing and you lost your job, you'd probably be okay, right? You have this entrepreneurial kind of spirit. But, uh, you know, for a lot of people, that's not the case. And so, you know, 
you know, you have that turning point, what are you going to do with it? That's the real question, right? You got you gotta, you gotta make it into something good. Otherwise you're just going to be in this downward spiral and that's not where you want to be. So I, I love that you said, you know, this is one of the best things that could happen to you because that's how it should be looked at. Right. Cause who knows if that turning point never would happen to somebody else, maybe they would just be stuck at that job for the rest of their lives. And they never would have known what they could have done with their, you know, with their lives in general, uh, just the, just the, how high they could go. So I think, I think that's amazing. And, you know, I want to talk a little bit about how you were able to create this life by design. You know, you built up enough passive income uh, at the age of 37 to leave your job. Like you said, talk to us about, you know, how you were able to build that portfolio, what that consisted of and how you were able to achieve that. Yeah. So I definitely invest in residential real estate. That's four units and below. So one, like a a single unit, duplex, triplex, or fourplex. Once you get into five, that's multifamily, different loans and all that sort of stuff. And so I stick to residential um, homes, which are fantastic. And so I bought one property. I was living in California at the time and I didn't know what I was doing. So everything I'm going to tell you is the wrong way, but I could definitely show you the right way. So I literally flew to Ohio because I knew in California in 2006, when I started investing, I was like, I can't make money here. Prices were skyrocketing. I couldn't rent it for anything that I would get anywhere near passive income. So I flew to Ohio. Again, this is not what I do now. It just gave me the wrong way to do it. Flew to Ohio, found a realtor, found a property manager. Both of them, I said, hey, you guys sound fine. I didn't know what I was doing. Hired them, got a property got a property manager. And literally within three or four months, that property manager started stealing from me. It was horrible, but that didn't deter me because I saw that it would eventually work out as long as I buy the next property. Well, first I need to do it right by finding the right people, putting those right people in place, which I've now have a system that I literally go through and take all my students through. But after I did that, I realized, okay, I got rid of this property manager. Now I have a good property manager in there because I did it right, hired the right person, And then it was just a matter of buying the next property because I'll give you an example of how this works out. So I always, and I always tell my students, we want to buy properties that are going to be making us $250 or more in passive income. Now, that's the minimum, $250 or more. And so if you make $250 a month from a property, that is $3,000 a year without working. Somebody else is doing all the work. If you have 10 properties, that is $2,000. $500 a month in passive income. That is $30,000 a year without working. And 20 properties is $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year without working. And so as you just scale the business, this is what I I realized was if I have this business model that I have a business and you're going to hear me say this over and over again, we build the business first. We don't just buy a property and then figure it out after that. No, no, no. That's the last thing we do. We first, we build the business. Now, as you have the business, you continually grow the business. Now, I could answer a lot of questions. So you, I'll pause here so you could ask some questions. Yeah, so I kind of want to talk about that. You know, you're talking about growing a business and, you know, putting the, you said putting the right people in the right places, right? And I think that's so critical in this, you know, whether you're, a, uh, you know, there's so many pieces of this. Can you talk to us about who are those critical team members you need to have a successful uh, business like you're talking about? If you hear anybody else teach real estate, or at least the majority of the people that teach real estate, they'll say, what you do, and remember, this is the wrong way. What you do is you find a property, you run the numbers, you make sure you're making about $100 a month in passive income, and then you find somebody to fix it, you buy it, then you find somebody to fix it up. Then you find a property manager to rent out the property, then you find a tenant. Well, in my opinion, that's literally just about backwards. We don't do that. In fact, I people that do that, I buy properties off them all the time because they are like, Dustin, just take this property to me. This is this is a headache. There's two AM phone calls for toilets, this, that, and the other. They get so fed up because they didn't do it right. They didn't build the business. Now, what it looks like to build a business, let me give you an example of what it looks like. So if you're going to start a convenience store, you know, a convenience store like a gas station, you know, candies and all that sort of stuff. So a convenience store is going to be started up not like this. You're not, you're not going to lease a space open the doors and put a box of candy bars in there. You're not going to do that. In fact, you'll go out of business in two seconds. No, what you'll do first is you'll build the business. You'll get the gondolas. Those are the shelving units that you put the candy bars on and the candy. You get the countertops, the fountain machines, the cold storage, the bank accounts, cash registers, employees. You'll get all of that before you buy any inventory. Inventory then goes into the business and then you have a business. Same thing with real estate. We build the entire business first and every piece of property that we buy is a piece of inventory that we put into the business. Because a lot of people tell you, your property, that is your business. Like, no, 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 no. My business owns real estate and that real estate is my inventory. I don't get 
I don't fall in love with any property. I can buy and sell any property. Well, I don't really sell them because I make money. And see, if you're watching, if you can see this on the video, I have four kids in my background, my four kids. I'm literally, all the 30 plus properties that I have, I'm literally going to give these to my kids on top of teaching them how to do it. So what you're going to do is when you're building the business, you're going to, before you buy the property, before you even think I'm going to look at buy it, you're going to find the right property managers, contractors, realtors, roofers, mortgage brokers, inspectors, uh, insurance agents. You're going to get all these people, even wholesalers and realtors, everybody in the business first. Because here's the key, Danny. A lot of people think that, okay, Dustin, you invest in Ohio and Texas and Arizona, and you're probably the expert in these cities. I'm like, no, 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 no. I am not the expert. I hire experts. That's what I do. I love hiring them give them a great job or a great business, and I'm a customer of theirs, they run my businesses for me. They are the experts. Like Zillow, Zillow's absolutely not the expert. Like if you see any of their numbers, they're, they're off, like I'll buy at least 10 or 20%. The experts are the people that literally live there. And I'll give you an example. If you have a property manager that lives there on the ground, remember, we find the property manager before we even think about buying a property. That's like the last thing is buying a property. That's the easy part. Hard parts of building the business. So we find a good property manager. We interview a bunch of them and finally settle on the one that we actually want to work with. Now, with that property manager, they're the expert. They're going to tell us, well, first, if they're even going to manage the property, because the last thing you want to do is buy, let's say, a $200,000 house, and they say, I'm, I can't manage it. It's in a bad area. I don't care if you spent $200,000 for it. I can't and won't manage it. And you won't be able to find a manager. And you've already fixed it up. You put like $50,000 into it. It's a drain on you because you didn't build the business first. No, what we do, we ask the property manager, hey, manager, I'm looking at this property. Remember, we already have the business built. I'm looking at this property. How much would I be able to rent this property for? That's the first question. And then what are my expenses that you can foresee? You ask these types of questions, like what type of clientele? What like, Are you actually even going to rent it? All these questions. They're the experts. And what they're going to say is, oh, shoot, yeah. So you're looking at this property. I have a property right around the corner. It's renting for $1,400 a month. We could probably get the same amount because they're the expert. They literally know what it's right across the corner. Same thing with realtors, wholesalers. I love wholesalers. They basically find good properties for me. I just, I wake up in the morning, drink my coffee, open my email. And that's how I find properties by wholesalers and realtors sending me deals because I built the business. People are working for me. So I'll pause there so you can ask some questions. No, I want to say uh, that's all great stuff. And I appreciate you going into you know, those 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 team members and why they're so critical and you know how to basically like look for a good property manager because that's so important, right, in this business. Uh, but one thing I want to talk about, it goes hand in hand with exactly what you're saying, is that you know, a lot of our listeners, they're passive investors, you know, and I know you're a big fan of passive investing because that's what you're doing, right? And with that being said, but I know there are going to be some listeners out there that maybe have a few single family homes or something like that, and they're thinking to themselves, it's not quite as passive as I want it to be or something like that. Right. So, so talk to us about, you know, that, that aspect of it and how you're able to create passive income streams with your strategy, like actually passive, you know? So that is a great, great point because a lot of people are going to buy properties. They're going to have one, two, three, four properties, and they're not, they're, they're realizing that for themselves, it's not passive enough. In fact, they're doing a lot of work. They're calling on, you know, making phone calls and all that sort of stuff. So I'll give you an example of how passive it is for me. So in 2017, when I quit my job, I literally drove around Japan, 600, no, sorry, six week trip, 2000 miles, drive around Japan on the left-hand side with my wife and my four kids. In 2018, and I didn't even think about my business at all. I didn't talk to my property managers, didn't do anything. 2018, I went to Europe for six weeks on a, I went to 11 different countries and did even worry or think about my business. In 2019, I went on a four-week field trip. We homeschooled my kids. So uh, we went on a field trip from Florida, drove all the way up to New York on a field trip. It was fantastic for four weeks. Didn't even think about my business. So this is what we do. If you already have properties or you're going to get into it. So I'm literally passive, like 100% passive. I don't do a thing. Like I said, maybe 30 minutes a month just by looking at statements. That's as passive as you can get. Yep. So with that, what we do is we build the business, but then we give them business rules. We run it like a business. Let me give you an example in your own personal life. If you have a house and you have a mortgage from a bank and you stop paying the mortgage, the bank, like clockwork, is going to start the process of foreclosing the property on you. 
It's not, they're not going to, oh, well, I, I get it. Your son is in jail. You had to bail him out. It's okay. We'll not let you pay the, we won't make you pay the mortgage. No, no, no. They won't do that. They'll say, you better pay this or we're kicking you out. Same thing in your business. We give all the people running the business, business processes and business rules. Let me give you a quick one. Let's say your property manager, which if you don't have a property manager, you need to hire one, in my opinion. And you might say, well, I don't have the money to hire one. Well, here's the amazing thing. I don't pay my taxes. I don't pay my insurance. I don't pay my property manager. I don't pay my mortgage. I don't pay any of that stuff. My tenants pay for every bit of that because I account for all of those expenses before I even think about buying the property. Once I know I can account for those, it's, it's super simple. Little addition and subtraction. You add up all of your expenses, all the ones I just listed out. Then you take your income, which is your rents, and your property manager told you. Let's say, okay, we expenses, our expenses are $1,000. Property manager says, okay, you could rent it for $1,300. Well, that difference is $300, and your property management fee is already included in that. You're already paying them through the tenant's money, but you're not working a job to pay them. You've already done that, plus you have that $300 difference at minimum of $250. So here's a quick thing. I'll go through with the property manager. Business rules. Rent is due on the 1st. It's late after the third. On the fourth, property manager, you literally, if they haven't paid, you literally put a three-day notice on their door. With that comes a late fee. Then once that three-day notice is up, you literally start an eviction like clockwork. This is the exact epitome of not being discriminatory. We literally treat everybody the exact same. So we give all of the people in our businesses business rules and business processes so they do it right without us even telling them what to do because we've already done it in the past they just make sure they run it the way we want it. Yeah, I love to hear that, man. You really got the systems lined out and the structure for really to to create a portfolio of uh, rental properties that is passive, right? Because I think that's, especially for our listeners, that's that's one of the main things, right? They're busy W-2 professionals. They want to build a, a portfolio of rental real estate, but they don't have the time to go out there and do all these things, right? Uh, for, you know, day in and day out. So being able to to have that passive income uh, is huge. So for you guys to be able to provide that structure and those ground rules, it's amazing, man. I, I actually love to hear that. I know a bunch of our listeners will want to reach out and hear more, but uh, you know, it's been a great conversation. But before we get out of here, Dustin, we want to make sure and shine the spotlight on you. So tell the listeners more about Master Passive Income and uh, Successfully Unemployed. Yeah, Danny. So I actually, if you don't mind, I have a free course. I, I would just love to get anybody started. Do you mind if I share that with everybody? Absolutely. Awesome. So if you go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course, all one word forward slash free course, I'll literally send you my investing course that'll show you how to find an area of the country to invest, how to build the business first, make sure you're buying the right properties, how to scale the business to quit your job. I'll give that to you. You can even text the word rental, R-E-N-T-A-L, rental to 33777. Rental to 33777. And also literally send that to you. Plus, I also have my podcast. So Master Passive Income is literally just me teaching real estate. Because Danny, here's what's interesting. And I'm sure you completely understand this. I can teach anybody how to invest in real estate, but I can't get them over that hurdle to realize that they can do it, that they will be an investor. Just like when I lost my job, that was that switch in my brain that I said, I can do it. So getting that ability for them to switch. That's why I have Master Passive Income. My YouTube channel, it's just literally me teaching everything how to do it. And so I have that. I have courses and coaching and all that sort of stuff, but check out Master Passive Income. Successfully Unemployed is also another podcast where I get to interview great people who are also successfully unemployed in every different way. So um, it, it's just great. I love podcasting. And so I actually have three podcasts, but I'll leave it at that. Just go check those guys out and my YouTube channel as well. Yeah, uh, highly recommend everybody go check that stuff out. You're putting out some, some amazing stuff there, man. Real value. So uh, absolutely, Thanks, Danny. anybody who's listening to this, go check it out. We're going to make sure to put all that stuff in the show notes, Dustin. So anybody who wants to check them out or get a hold of you, whatever they can do. So uh, Dustin, man, a lot of stuff, a lot of great stuff today. Really appreciate you coming on the show, man. Thank you, Danny. I appreciate having me on. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. Head over to iTunes to subscribe to the show. And while you're there, we really appreciate you leaving a rating and written review. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to hear on the show, connect with us on social media or through our website at twosmartassets.com. We look forward to speaking to each and every one of you. Talk to you soon.